All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Rainmaker podcast where we have the man, the myth, the legend, John Wetmore and his $17 waters um, on here, the Just Waters. Hopefully we can get him a sponsorship or something um, in regards to that. But um, <laughs> I, I love this is probably the third episode that I've had John on and I, I love having him on just for multitude of reasons. A man of action, um, a, a man that has done it at a high level has a high level acumen for business as well as now he's becoming a powerhouse on social media and branding. So I'm on here to learn a little bit from him. So a man who needs no introduction. Welcome John Wetmore to the show once again. My man, I pre appreciate you having me, dude. Yeah. Always uh, always a good time. And what I love is that we, we, we always learn from each other. You know what I mean? I, I enjoy relationships like that. It's cool to have like, oh, it's a good friend, but it's cool to be like, Good friend and we learn from each other and challenge yeah, each other sure. and Value, i love a lot sure. of what you're doing so I, absolutely absolutely so um i would be it, it would be silly of me not to introduce you and to talk about the accolades and success that you've had in the world of insurance doing some things that most people can't even fathom imagine let alone you know seeing it on paper and yeah. and just trying to wrap your mind around how do we get here? How did we get to multiple hundred million dollars, you know, with an agency, with the powerhouse that is your is your agency and your team as an integrity partner? How do we get here, man? Man, it sounds stupid, but every time people ask that, I'm like, yeah, it was one agent at a time, you know, from early on. I think it was, um, dude, it's, it's interesting looking back on it, right? Because looking back on it's very different than going through it. You know, going through it, I didn't see this at all. Like, not this level. Mm. I knew I was going to build a team for sure. I knew, I knew I'd have money one day. Like, I, I just kind of always felt that. Um, I'm a little bit of a natural, not even a little bit. I'm a natural like leader in the sense like if we're working on a project or someone in a group, I'm going to take charge. I'm going to figure. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm. I've always been that way, even as a kid. Um, so I, I think when I learned about insurance, I saw something bigger than just being an insurance sales guy for sure. Cause I didn't want to do that. I did not want to sell life insurance for a living. I didn't, I just didn't want to be a sales guy, period. What I liked about this was there was ability to sell and get myself out of a hole, which I was in a pretty big one. Um, right. as you know, you know, I was 35 when I found the business, five mm -hmm. kids broke pre post bankruptcy, foreclosures, car repo, divorce, like I living in a motel, like I was a disaster. Mm. And, um, you know, and that was kind of normal life. It's not like I was up and then went down. I was just down for a long time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I grew up, <laughs> this is how I grew up, dude. You know, single mom, teenage mom on welfare. I was a teenage dad and, you know, just, I was a shit show, bro. I messed up relationships. I messed up marriage. I, you know what I mean? I did my best to be a good dad to my kids. Um, but I didn't have any any father to look up to. Re I mean, I have a dad, but he wasn't really in the picture. You know what I mean? A ton and definitely no success in my family. No, no I just didn't have that, dude. So I was a little bit of a lone wolf growing up, kind of on my own and a little bit of a rebel. And that caused me a lot of problems in, in life and on jobs, 20-something jobs, you know, till I found insurance. And um, I was tired. You know, I, I was just tired, bro. I was tired of being broke. I was tired of my wife making more money. I was tired of her paying my bills. It felt really pathetic, honestly. Um, I was tired of, tired of telling my kids no. Um, I was tired to listen to a boss. I was tired of commuting to a job. I was tired of freaking getting a child earned income credit on my tax return every year. <laughs> you know, yeah, you maybe you don't know what that is. Much. But then yeah. you gave me back at the end of the year this much back as a credit, right? <laughs> yeah, and I even got I even got more than I paid in. We were that broke. The earned income credits, like, yo, here's money you didn't even pay in. Here's yeah. just extra for having too many kids, and you know what I mean. Like, I was literally like living on the off the government in 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 several ways. Yeah, well, that's um, why it's interesting because it's like statistically, you and I aren't even supposed to be here, right? It's like every the, the deck is stacked against us. Right. Single parents, welfare. Right. Like all of these things. Right. Just mm -hmm. but, but we made it through and it's like 
man, you know, just, just like every time we have this conversation, I always ask you to tell your backstory because it's so good. Mm -hmm. But it also reminds me like, oh, I've been through some of the same stuff. And you know how, you know, as entrepreneurs, we're thinking big and forward. But it's like, dude, we come a long way. Most people, mm -hmm. I saw this thing from Wes uh, Watson that he said that, because uh, Wes Watson was the president, I don't know if you know uh, his story, but he's a guy mm -hmm. online that's a, a huge motivational speaker now. And I think he did like 10 years in prison. And he says that, right. he said that like, 10, 10 minutes in handcuffs, people would radically change their life. He said 10, 10 days, people would perform like, like uh, religion. And he's, and he's just making, he's making analogies to this. But then he said, he yeah. said 10 months, people would radically change it in 10 years. He's like, dude, you would not even recognize who they were that people take for granted so many things and how things would break them. And his point to that was, is that people don't realize what they have right now that they're wasting and taking it for granted, just the normal things. And you know, you know what they say. It's like people don't really know what they got till it's gone, right? And so for us, you know, now we didn't have much. So we made what we could out of it, putting things together in food stamps and like all that stuff. And and to see where we are now on this journey is is absolutely amazing. And you know, like I said, statistically not supposed to be here. And so but my question for you that I always want to know is like, when did it click where you're like, I'm going to build something big? Like, when did you like, okay, I'm going all in on this agency all right. instead of just being a role yeah. producer when you're going to just go all in? So I, I, I started building the day I started insurance. So I knew I was going to build period one. I, mm -hmm. It's two part for me. I did not go, I'm going to build some massive something. I just knew that I was going to leverage my ability to naturally lead some other people, to, to, to present opportunity, um, to teach people how to do something I'm doing and make a little piece of the pie. Like I, I wasn't confused about that part at all. I did that in mortgages for a hot minute, um, which was the first time I was presented with money and it got pulled out because I managed everything terribly. I didn't know how to run a business. I didn't know how to foresee things. It was a, it was a disaster. And I got money and bro, I spent it like I was a teenage welfare product. You know I mean like I went all in on like, the new rims and the rate, like I was a dipshit with it, you know? So, but the concept in mortgages is, is the same. I had like 10, 10 loan officers. I was like, hell, I'll just, I'll, I, this can't be that deep. I sell X, I can hire some other people and make spread. Like that worked in that business. So when I was taught that insurance is the same way, I saw that from step from day one. So I was, I was, I was part-time as an agent for a year. I was, I was commuting to my accounting job um, I was making like 40 grand a year as an accountant commuting like an hour and a half each way through Atlanta. And, uh, on my commute, I was doing recruiting calls. Right. And for perspective, like a lot of people struggle building in this, as you know, and most there's high turnover. I don't think anybody's confused about that in insurance. Um, and I think there's some level of high turnover because it's easy entry and people hire everybody hoping they stick, mm. which is what I did too. Versus like, is it really someone you want to work with? Is it really someone who's going to put forth the effort? Is it really someone, do you mean, or do you literally anybody that can breathe or a fog or mirror, as they say, are you hiring? And that's tends to be what most people do in this industry. It's a little bit of reverse that almost like the agent gets to choose where they go. And I didn't like that part. I don't like that part still that people slobber over someone with a license who has no work ethic whatsoever. I just, I hate that piece. Mm. Um, so, and the reason I say that is like, I did that at the beginning too. And although I started recruiting at the beginning, I didn't build anything for, I didn't start getting any traction, building anything for two and a half years. I had done in between the summer of 2012 and the end of 2014, I had done like 700 interviews myself. Right. Did you say 700? Time, yeah. 700 interviews. My personal, like me personally interviewing agents in the, in that two year span. And I still only had myself as a writer at the end of 2014. You know what I mean? And I'm like, yo, I'm doing something wrong. And that was the revelation of, and I was still at that point, I was a mediocre producer. So I was a mediocre producer and I had no agent and I had be clear. I got a couple agents started they sell a policy or two and someone cancels and they quit. You know what I'm saying? Or they don't go to trainings and I'm mad they don't go to trainings and they quit because I'm mean. Like that stuff happened. 
so I did get some agents paid, but no one, no one did anything of any significance. And again, at the end, start of 2015, it was still just me. All my, I, that was it. I was the only writer. And again, even though I was at a point where I made relative to my accounting job, I made okay money in 2014. I grossed like top line six figures, like a hundred, just over a hundred grand, not multiple. And I probably netted, I don't know, 70, 80, something, whatever it was. And, um, but dude, I was still at a point where it was like, I'm so close to other people who are killing it. And I'm over here mediocre still. And I have the same access they have. So I kind of, I, I, I went through this spot, dude, where I like, um, I had a little bit of a financial, another <laughs> financial situation in my life. And I was mad, which you know the story. I've told you the story, obviously. But I, w- I was mad, dude. And it was over like a, a thousand bucks a month. And that was, to me at the time, a big number. Meaning if I present to anyone watching, here's a new bill, unexpected. You're, just for argument's sake, your water bill now goes up to a thousand bucks a month. New right. change in the way water bills work. It's a thousand bucks a month. Do you lose your mind? Right now, no. Agreed, right? But most people watching, new thousand bucks a month. Or 10 years ago, five years ago for you. Oh, yeah. New thousand in, bucks I'm a month. World, I'm at the check cashing place trying to figure yeah, it out. Yeah, buddy. So I was losing my mind. And be clear, this was something for my kids. You know what I mean? So I had a, I had a moment of weakness where I was mad at the situation and mad at all the external factors and all the things. And thankfully, I had someone in my life be like, challenge my thought process, you know? And they were like, dude, you've been in the business now two and a half years. I'm not trying to be an a-hole, but are you literally losing your mind over one application a month? And dude, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, yo, when you say it like that, yeah, I I actually, yes, (laughs) I am currently losing my mind over one application a month. (laughs) <laughs> and be clear, I was mediocre for two and a half years, right? And bro, I don't know, eight, 10 apps, 12 apps would be a big mouthful. You know what I mean? Like a couple apps a week, maybe. And I'm like, I am losing my mind over that. Yes. And then I, that reality set in like instant for me, dude, it hit me. Like, it was like, he punched me in the face and I was grateful because I instantly had this moment of clarity. Like, dude, I'm holding myself back with my own thought process, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm blaming leads and I'm blaming, you know, my ex and I'm blaming the weather and I'm blaming carriers and I'm blaming underwriting and I'm blaming whatever for reasons why I wasn't successful. And, uh, when he worded it that way, man, it was really powerful in the way that people, how people can think so differently in the same situation. Mm, and, and I, and I, yeah, dude. And I said to myself, bro, I want to, th- I want to think like that. I, w- I, I need to, I need to, f- I'm broken. <laughs> I need to fix me. And dude, that thought process combined with me deciding that very day that I never in my life wanted to worry about a thousand dollars again, bro, everything changed one day. Yeah, you know what's interesting about that? Not to cut you off. I'm, yeah. I, you, you really got me thinking because I'm like, well, why does that resonate with me so well? And I can remember I had a, a 2012 Impala. It was white. I got it here from a buy here, play here place, waiting tables, yeah, yeah. in and out of insurance. And they came to repo it. And yeah. I was so behind that they were, they called me to tell me they were going to get it. And I was so crazy at this time that I told them that they couldn't have it back. And I went and hit it like around the corner, right? I never told a story. Yeah. Yeah. And once they came and got it, I, um, I didn't have a car for like three months because I was just trying to work to get back. And so I couldn't see my daughter. And at that moment, I was like, I'm going to make so much effing money that a thousand dollars or or fifteen hundred bucks or whatever it is is I, like I'm not even gonna notice it coming out yeah. of my account if I don't pay attention to it. Yeah. So I know what that moment is where you just like, all right, I'm tired of playing at this low level. Mm-hmm. When are you gonna get your ish together? And when are you gonna just like yeah. work to your potential? And I think, dude, a lot of people are frustrated, but they aren't willing to go do something about it. You know, and I think there's levels to frustration. There, I was certainly frustrated in my life, but I just complained. You know what I mean? 
And when I didn't have money in the account, I'm like, damn, I guess I'll just put the milk back. And when the credit card bounces, I'm like, well, shit, I guess I'll just pay a $35 late fee. You know what I mean? And $187 in interest next month. And you know what I mean? I was just like, I, I accepted it. And for whatever reason, man, I was at a point, I was just like, I'm done, dude. I'm just done. And I have more ability. I have more belief. And there was a lot around. And I hope people get this out of you and I. Is like, I was like, yo, if these dipshits over here can do it, why can't I? Right. And dude, I love today being someone else's dipshit, bro. I love that people look at me and they're like, if that dude can do it, I hope they think that. I hope they think that. can do it, yeah. <laughs> You know, um, and so, dude, it all started in 2015, man. I went out and I issued like 460 grand of my own pen that year. And I started, I started realizing my flaw in recruiting was I was recruiting solely to benefit me and my bank account. I was mm. recruiting for the override. That was it. I wasn't recruiting because I gave a shit about the agent at all. I was literally recruiting for the override, dude. What do you mean? And by that? Like, can, you, can you dive into that? I just wanted the money. I was only recruiting you so I get paid. I never once asked you one question about your situation. I never looked at your schedule. I never looked at your finances. I never asked you about your kids. I never asked what you want to achieve in life. I never made a plan with you. Does that make sense? I never worked on your schedule. I never worked on your mindset. I'm like, yo, you're either in or you're out. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And if you didn't like it, I, I kick rocks, dude. I just didn't, I had no empathy for anyone's situation. Um, and I just, there was no, I wasn't trying to help agents get rich. Yeah. And in 2015, dude, I'm like, yo, I can help you get rich. Now I got to find a balance. I can't flip and be who I'm not. I'm not by nature, a naturally empathetic person. I'm just not, I'm really direct by nature. I'm not like, I have to work on those other things that aren't, that I'm not amazing at. Um, but I, I had to still be me, dude. And I wanted to be direct and honest with people. And so I started sharing my story. And the only reason that I became successful, bro, is because I worked three times as much. I made three times the phone calls. I saw three times the people. And I interviewed three times. But that's it. <laughs> I still – I didn't change carriers. I didn't change leads. I didn't change IMOs. I didn't change mentors. I didn't change nothing but working more. <laughs> Does that make sense? I didn't do – So the secret to success isn't all these other things that we talk about – the be do have not mine mine's do. not it's just mine do. is not <laughs> now there's people that get mad at me when i say this and they're like work smarter not harder you should care for your kids more in your schedule you shouldn't work so much i'm like bro i was working 100 hours a week making fucking 30 grand a year dude and never saw my kids flipping pizzas and working in warehouses and like i have I'm, f you i don't care my path out was working hard and not not being emotional. So working hard, yes. Work hard and be emotional, still a struggle. Huh. Work hard and don't be emotional, right? And for me, it became literally a, like this became like a game, dude, of numbers. If I do this much, I get this much. And I just stopped caring about all the stuff in the middle. And then I combined it with, I can teach that. I was the agent who complained. I was the agent who started out poorly. I was the agent who blamed the leads and the carriers and the clients and all the other stuff in the upline. I was that guy, dude. <laughs> so I'm like, wh why would I tell someone that the, the phone script is what got me better? I'd be lying. Why would I say the in-home or selling IULs or annuity? Like all those things, like I'm not saying those things are irrelevant, but that's not what made me make the money. Does that make sense? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> the IUL is a hot thing right now. That's so funny. That I, I ain't mad at people who do them. <laughs> but if you're lazy as shit, selling IULs isn't going to get you rich. <laughs> Unless you're the unicorn who has great communication skills and gets the referrals. And uh, Amen to that guy. I'm not that guy, dude. There's, you know what I mean? The charge back, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so you know what's funny, though? One of the things that I'm noticing, the commonality, because I just did a podcast with Dave Richard, another tech department. Was yeah. like, 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 there's no substitute for hard work, right? Is 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 getting out I don't know and one and doing that. Like, if you want to guarantee your success, the inputs that you yeah. need to put in needs to X, yeah. not just a little Someone bit. Say it's AI. Bit. Yeah, not from mm -hmm. forty to fifty, right? It needs to exponentially go up. Correct. 
And you said yeah. you did three times the amount, right? That was it, dude. I mean, it wasn't that deep. I was seeing 10 clients a week. I'm like, why don't I see 30? I was interviewing 10, 5, 10 people a week. I'm like, why don't I interview 30? You know what I mean? And the numbers made sense. And you've seen me do it before. I'm like, yo, when you look at a very basic level without getting too deep, anyone that ever watches this, think about how long it takes you to do present to one client. Dude, no one in the history of time has ever told me more than it averages an hour. Right. When someone's brand new, they might be like, I spend an hour and a half, maybe. I'm like, all right, if you're doing five, six, seven, eight, ten of those a week, dude, basic math says you ain't working 40 hours a week. And 40 hours a week is what the average person works. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, and yeah, we want to have above sense. average income doing way below average quantity. So I was like, dude, I'm not the sales guy. And now be clear, I did learn how to sell really good. I did learn how to sell annuities. I did learn how to you know, book up my full schedule on 50, 60 phone calls a week. I did learn how to use automations. I did learn all those things with time, but that's not what got me out of the hole. Right. You know what I'm saying? And what I love about my way and many others, it's not like I fucking invented it, is I can teach it to anyone. Meaning I don't care how bad you think you are. There was a dude who posted in Cody's group yesterday. I don't know if you saw it. And he was like, terrible day. Made 200 phone calls, grinded the day out, and only booked five appointments. The day sucked. The day sucked. And, I, and I'm like, yo, I used to think that way too until one day I realized I could make 200 phone calls in like three hours. And if I did a full day work, I'd have had, you know what I'm saying? If I did 600 phone calls instead of 200, I'd have 15 appointments instead of five. Right. This isn't that deep. And then I would have been excited about the day, and I would have been excited about how many appointments I had. But somehow we allow people to trick themselves and go, 200, 200 dials, poor baby. You should get better leads. Bro, that ain't the fix for most people. And you being a lead guy, you know that. Most people, that ain't the – now, when someone's making some money, can they buy back their time with better leads? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. You know, I'm in. But, but to start – yeah, But it can't be the – it can't be the, the magic. It ain't magic, dude. Yeah. Yeah, Correct. Sure. I always say new leads don't make you good. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And then again, even if let's, – let's pretend, dude, and I know you're big into the automation stuff, which amen. Let's pretend Arturo can book 15 appointments on your calendar tomorrow doing no work. Can, like, can you really teach sales at that point? Right. You know what I mean? Like what if the next guy that you recruit doesn't get that many appointments on his calendar for the day? Well, now you can't teach the guy how to be successful. I can because I can teach him to be successful without Arturo or for social media or leads or anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it was very duplicatable, dude. And the only thing I changed with the recruiting mo model was I could, I could show you what I did to, to change my financial situation with help. I got a lot of help. You know, I had some great people in my corner. I can tell you that. I can show you the path. But if you're not willing to do the work, I'm 100% sure I'm going to quit you before you quit me. <laughs> and if, again, if you're not coachable and you don't do the things you say you're going to do, right, and you don't communicate when you don't do those things, because how many times you got ages like, I'm going to kill it this week. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And they don't do it. And you, and you don't hear from and, them. Correct. So that frustrated me. So I'm like, coachable. Meaning if I tell you, you, here's what you're doing wrong, you should do it this way. If you're going to argue with me, I ain't mad, but that makes you not coachable, so stop calling me. Like I ain't mad at you, but why do you keep calling looking for a different answer? So my methodology, my principle was coachable, number one, because I was coachable to my mentors. When they challenged me, I listened. I realized I had to change, right? Do the things you say you're going to do. I'm going to work this day. I'm going to call this many leads. I'm going to buy this many leads. I'm going to take care of my debt. I'm going to do whatever things I say I'm going to do. Do them and have some grace with people because at the beginning, I only had two things because stuff life does get in the way. Have a little bit of grace with people. Learn to be empathetic and go like, if you can't do the things you say you're going to do, communicate with me. Just let me know. The asterisk next to that is if you do number three too often, I'm out. I can only deal with so many times where you don't do the thing. You know what I mean? And my goal was to help people get out of their financial situation. And if you were coachable and you did the things you committed to, and I'd, 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 it'd be a big Q&A, dude. I'm doing a 30-minute, hour-long Q&A, and we're making a game plan. And you have to agree to the game plan. 
And if you don't execute on the game plan you agreed to, I'm confused on what you need me any further for. So I'm moving on to someone new. Because I, mean, I just want to help people get paid, dude. If I help people get paid, my things would work out for me. Yeah. Just that little shift in mentality. Let me help you get paid. Bro, we, yeah. we blew up, dude. And it's been nonstop since 2015. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know what's crazy? Because it sounds like, like you got clarity. You got like your mission changed, but but like you evolved as a leader though. Cause like all of that yeah. is like fruits of like helping other people win, right? You know what I'm saying? Cause like if, if you do that, then the good stuff's gonna happen to you regardless, right? Yeah. So you're and if you can teach that, so it's like okay, cool. And then obviously you had to get better at communication, right? Expectations, right? Yeah, for other people that. and yourself. Right. And, you know, and kind of navigating people's feelings a little bit where you, you probably yeah. from Boston is like, I don't give a rip about anybody's feelings, but you're not going to make a lot of money. Not that, you know what I mean? I you know, have to, be I had to be dynamic. Yeah, I had to become sure. dynamic instead of blaming no different than agents blame the leads. Bro, how many managers blame the agent? <laughs> right They're They get this. The, there's a manager, you know, lots of them. Yes. They get mad at the agent for blaming the client for lack of sale or blaming the lead or blaming the carrier. Or blame, they get mad at the agent for that. Fair? Yes. And then they're like, but then they're mad at the agent for their lack of growth. So they want the agent to take ownership of why they're lacking success, mm -hmm. yet they lack their team growth. They blame their lack of team growth on their people. Right. I'm like, meaning... Dude, this guy rolled up debt. He's mean. Did you teach him what debt meant? Did you watch your book of business? Did you call him when if he had the first chargeback? Did you teach him how to handle it? Did you did you do any of the stuff you have to do? Hell, you are the one that hired him. Did you hire the wrong person? Or your hiring skills wrong? Or your interview skills bad? Or your expectations incorrect? You know what I mean? Like, I just owned everything, dude. I'm like, F it. It's all on me. Let me, I'll carry the weight of all the mistakes. That way I can learn from them and adjust. You know, we still do it now, and I, I still live by yeah, that. I'm like, sure. All right, what, even if me and you have something, and I'm like, dude, Arturo messed up. Cool. What role did I play in Arturo messing up? How did I lead him to believe this was the right decision? What did I do mm. wrong that he lacked clarity? Right. Dude, I, I won't let my team not take ownership of stuff now. Yeah, and then that's another thing is that you can hand that off to other people when you're taking radical responsibility that yeah. there's no friction between like, hey, First thing we got to do is we got to take radical responsibility to the situation. It's not going to change because that thing isn't going to change. The thing that needs to change isn't right. outside, it's inside. So I'm going to take responsibility of this, and now I'm going to be expecting you to do some of the same because that's the only way we're going to get anywhere yeah. in this scenario, which is and, – and, and so I'm sensing that too. You said dynamic, which is a lot of shift. So let's kind of shift into you go from uh, not figuring it out to figuring it out to uh, leading – um, with the head and not the heart, but just trying to have just I need to make some money. And then you realize if I get if I can make a lot of people rich, I can also get rich also. And you you evolve to communicating better, having a little bit of empathy, but a short lease with expectations on like, hey, I'm going to show you exactly what to do. The moment that you don't, I'm out. And I think a lot of leaders don't do that. They are afraid to lose people. Right. Okay. And so not having that. And so that's one shift. And then you grow your business. Obviously, there's so much more in there. But I want to transition to this other switch that I've seen go on, which is you have become very – you're already dynamic, but you become a, have a dynamic presence on stage and leveraging social media. So I'm curious, through all the things that you're doing with having a $200 million-plus business, when you were, like, going all in on this personal brand and this social media thing, when did that – uh, change for you. It's evolved a little bit over the last 12 months or so. Um, and I'm, I made a commitment that this year we were go I am going to be a marketing guy. I am John Wetmore will be a marketing guy this year. That's we're going, we are doing every day I show up to the office. That's what we work on. And dude, same thought process, man. I'll, I'll be straight up, bro. Watching guys like you and Cody and it made me mad. And I'm like, Again, not in a mean, like, I dislike you kind of way, but I'm like, yo, we've built something dope. And these guys are bigger brands on social. They're more well-known. They speak better. They articulate things. Like, I got stuff to work on. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I'm God, I got I gotta be better. And I'm I'm watching a lot of you guys, a lot of people, not just you guys in the industry, but even outside the industry, people build their businesses based on their willingness to get uncomfortable on on social and share stuff and be vulnerable and put things out there. And I, I was always a, like, I hate social media by default. Yeah. Like if I didn't, if I, if none of this did anything for business, bro, I'd throw my cell phone in the ocean and not have one. Do you know what's crazy? I don't like it either, but it makes me money. So I use it as a tool. Yeah. It's leverage. And I don't, I don't have to, I can have one to many conversations or instead of one to one, I can have that conversation with people ahead of time. I can handle objections. Yeah. I can do Correct. all of these things to preframe people ahead of time. Yeah. And I learned yeah. this from Alex and Mosey. He says that his content then indoctrinates people on how to communicate and to come to him that Correct. they're the perfect person for his business. And Dude, I was like, people oh. call me now. Yeah. They're like, they call me now and they're like, so I know you're big on tracking numbers and activity and I know I'm not doing enough work and I know, but, and I'm like, well, if you, there is no, but if you know that, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? So you train people ahead of time before they even come to you when they say that and then they know your story. They're already bought in. It's like, I I like when people have their mind already made up and it's really like, okay, how do we just make this work so we can give it a go? Yeah. Yeah, man. So I, um, you know, was a big, was a big switch for me too, is like, I would go to events. I started doing events like outside of <clears throat> my world, FFL world, about three, about three years ago now, I guess. And, um, it gave me a different perspective, man. Um, honestly, the first time I walked into Cody's event, dude, it was the first time I had been in an insurance event ever in my career. And I was at that point, eight, nine years in, bro, I walked into this event and I could have been the janitor there, dude. You know what I mean? Like not in a weird, I don't know how to say it without feeling weird, but no one there knew who I was. Whereas if I went to one of our own events, bro, I'd have 30, 40, 50 people around me, you know, asking questions, trying to get feedback, how I can help them, things like that. And I'm like, bro, there's a big C out here of, of, of industry, you know, and people trying, and I'm like, I ain't done nothing yet. But every once in a while, man, I'd go to an event and it would start, it started happening more and more where people would be like, yo, at this last event, you said this and it changed my world. Hey, thank you for this training you put on YouTube. I now make an extra 30 grand a month from that video you did on selling old people, uh, the buying time concept. Right. Hey, dude, when, when, when I saw that video, you selling young people, man, it changed my whole perspective. I started picking up two, three, four more apps a week and I'm like, I didn't even know anybody watched that video. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And now I'm going all over the country and people are making money off the stuff I'm putting out. And to be honest, dude, the reason I first started putting it out was out of efficiency because so many agents were asking me the same questions. Uh, I'm like, yo, what if I just record a video and put it on YouTube as a storage point? That way, when you ask the question about, hey, how do I overcome the objection when I'm sitting with a 72-year-old with a mortgage protection lead, I either want all or nothing. That's not enough insurance for the money. Like, how do I overcome that? Dude, I was really good at that. Like, really good at that. Where a few years prior, I saw a 72-year-old on a lead. Bro, I throw it. I wouldn't even call it. I'm like, nah, I'm out. You know, (laughs) I I learned how to get really good at it, and that kind of became my thing. And mine was just became – literally, my content became – let me stop answering the same question every day. And that's how, that's how YouTube started. Dude, mm. I looked up one day and I had like a couple thousand subscribers. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, it just started trickling, man. And I was like, I've not been intentional with this at all. Um, I want to add value to more people. I want to, I want to be a big part of the industry, not just a big part of my niche or my IMO or my company. You know what I mean? And um, man, so I just was like, Yo, some of these guys that inspire me out there are just more intentional than I am. Right. You know, where I just kind of wing, I would just wing it and throw stuff up. And I still don't think we're perfect at it, but I'm definitely getting better. And we're yeah. definitely more focused on it. Yeah, I can see the intentionality you know? in the content from somebody who does it. I'm like, okay, yeah. what happened? Because John is yeah. just is locked and loaded. And, yeah. you know, just the, the, the packaging of it, like the, the, the shorts. We're getting there, dude. Like the, the we're clips. getting there. And, and I, so I think that's important. And the reason why it's important is because I, I've been trying to explain this to a lot of agents. Like, 
there was a lot of shifts in the marketplace from you know client acquisition for insurance agents and so as things start moving towards more online and facebook advertising it's going to be more competitive the cost is going to go up a little bit from from that people who got way bigger budgets than than, yeah, than we do and so it's like there's one way for people to stand for you to be able to stand out and to be indoctrinated and that's by putting some type of having some type of presence online and you don't have to be like all in like me but it'd be nice if people can know who you are what you do how you help people and you can educate yeah. people because we all if we're looking for something what's the first thing we do we google it if you want to go and buy a new tv or a motorcycle or something yeah. you go and you google it there's more information um uh, on the world right now than has ever been and so we're informed people which goes to show the best customer is an educated customer amazon gives you way more information than you could even think of to ask on a product if you just wanted a, a, a replacement of batteries for your remote right yeah. but again the best customer is an educated customer so now with that point if you're someone looking for someone or, or 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 to sell a product or service you can create these assets my instagram is i got a couple pieces of real estate it's worth over a million bucks my instagram is worth just as much as that because it produces that and when you start thinking about that it's like oh this is an asset and so the cool thing about assets is income follows assets the, the wealthiest people either have the most or they have the best ones so if I have this one asset, how can I increase my income? Well, every time I put content on there, that's appreciation. My, yeah. my asset gets more valuable every single day when I put something on there. So it yeah. just makes no, sense. And so that's kind of why I'm getting into just talking more about, again, not like getting crazy with it, but having some type of presence in the social brand because it does help it impact your business in a good way. And so I'm curious, have you noticed the difference? Like you said, that little thing where people yeah, come to you and say, I know this, I heard you say this, right? You train people right. ahead of time to really introduce to you. Yeah, we, um, yeah, for sure. I get, um, now, bro, I get almost daily, I get a message from someone I don't know thanking me. Almost every day. Mm. It's not It's not quite every day yet, but it's almost, it's almost every day, dude. And, um, which is cool. Even if I take out comments, I mean like direct DMs, you know what I'm saying? Comments, I get something every day. Um, you know, and what I, kind of what I looked at it too, just kind of like a commercial in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Like anything that I do business-wise, as you said, people are going to look me up. You know what I'm saying? So even if they don't – and there's like – have you ever read The Five Levels of Leadership? That's Maxwell. A, Maxwell, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's like the pers basically the levels are someone else's perspective on you, right? right? I'm not a level. I'm not. I'm not a level. Say I'm a level three. I'm not a level three to everyone. Right. I could be a level four to you and a level one to someone else. It's someone else's perspective of you, right? Does that make sense? So right. there's a lot of people who come across me, dude. I'm a level one too. They don't know me from a hole in the wall. They right. don't care anything. They don't. They don't know anything. Don't care. They, it doesn't matter to them at all, right? But if I come, if I cross paths with them and I'm just a level one to them and then they go to my social media and they see all the interviews and the stages and all the people and the accolade and the podcast. And I'm like, yo, I instantly become a level two or three to that person. So it upgrades who I am in the perspective of people who don't know me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yes. it, in that sense, it's, it, it validates things in a way that I can't do on my own. Yeah, and um, it allows so, you to not so, have to convince people ahead of time. They get to come correct. to their own conclusion, which is the most powerful thing. Correct. When you tell someone something, it's different than when they come to the conclusion on their own, correct. right? And yeah. it's submitted in their mind. Whether they believe, whether it's true or not, there's so many people correct. that believe things that aren't true, and good luck getting them off of that. So if you let them come to yeah. their own conclusion, this is one of the most powerful things. Yeah, yeah. Um, so a lot of it's that, dude, and that came from recruiting. So if I'm like, I'm going to recruit – or I'm going to send DMs, or I'm going to do ads, or I'm going to do whatever. I'm not confused. A good amount of people are going to go to my social. And a few years ago, dude, my social was pretty empty. You know what I'm saying? And so now when they go, it's like, oh, dang, look at all this stuff. Yeah. Right? So again, validates. Um, and then I'll, I'll say this, dude, because people fear putting stuff out there, and they overcomplicate mm. it like they overcomplicate everything. Wow. And people overcomplicate everything, dude, as you know. And I'm like, all right, if you're new to this, and you're like, yeah, you can do social because of whatever. And I'm like, like, Artur, you can do social because you have 
X number of hundreds of clients and you're doing X amount of million, da, da, da. It's like, no, he has the clients in the middle because he was doing the social before he had it. The yes. willingness got him there. Yes. You know, and, and so what I'll say to over a long period of time. Yeah, dude, like everything, bro. Um, so what I'll say is I'll, I'll challenge, I'm going to make it, I'll make it so easy for people to do content. And most people won't do it, dude. Most people will not do it. So everyone's in the business, whether you're brand new and you're an agent and you're like, I would love to, but I don't know what to put out. Or you're a manager and you lack confidence and you're like, I don't know what to put out. The simplest way to do it. Any client that you see throughout the week is asking you questions during your presentation, objections, challenges. There's always client stuff, right? The simplest way is to go, imagine you see only five clients this week. Imagine if you took one question from each client and you made a video on that question. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like simple. Like, hey, when I die, what happens? Hey, can I have a contingent beneficiary? Hey, if my kid is under 18, what do I do? Hey, you, you know what I mean? Like just simple stuff, dude. Right. Take simple questions from your clients that they're asking you every day. And instead of being blind to the questions, answering them and moving them on from them, Take the question and use it to, to, to build your brand more, right? Answer the question. Sure. Write it down. Make a three-minute video on it, a 60-second video on it, 90-second yeah. video on it. Great. And then same on the agency side, dude. If, you, if you're dealing with agents in any capacity, but you get 100 questions a week. Does that make sense? Yeah, so if I'm getting 100 sure. questions a week, why would I not have 100 pieces of free content a week? Yeah, it's efficiency hey, and it's leverage. Yeah, it makes sense. That's it, dude. That's it. And then you can get to a point where now if you're doing things like this, bro, both me and you are going to put this content out on social. <laughs> sure. As soon as I get done, I'm going to download it and send it yeah. to you. Yeah. 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 So it's like you can, again, anyone that's doing anything, you get questions all day about who you are and what you do as a professional. You're telling me you can't hit record on your phone? No software, no cameras, no mics, no Yeti, not whatever they whatever they call. I, dude, I'm wearing an AirPod right now. Yeah, I don't have and nothing. It, it sounds <laughs> phenomenal. The technology of Apple is amazing. Your yeah. iPhone, the speaker and the camera is, is better than yeah. some of these cameras I have. In like here. it's just, dude, hit record. And hey, Mary asked me this this week. Here's how I would answer that. Hey, have you ever wondered this as a client? Hey, as an agent, have you ever wondered this? Here's the answer. And dude, no. you start doing that every day. Two, three, four years from now, you'd be like, oh dang. Yeah. The, the the thing is, most won't do it that consistently that long. Yeah. It's, even though it's that it's simple. They don't get the reward right away from doing it, which Correct. is the thing. It's just like building a big business. The delayed gratification keeps a lot of people from greatness. And that's the same thing as me only wanting her to, to recruit for me to get paid an override. Mm. People only want to do content if they get paid today. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, why won't you do the content to add value to people who aren't watching it? In a few years, you'll get paid. What's that saying like? How's it go? I'm gonna mess it up. I think it's like if you if you never if, well, how's it go? If you never do worth more than you're getting paid, you'll never get paid more than more than what you do. It's something. Yeah. You know, does it make sense? Yes. Like I'm paid way more today than I should be relative. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, when I wasn't getting paid, I was doing a ton of work. Yeah. And the thing, it, the thing is, is, is you got to be willing to do what most people are. Everybody else feels the exact same way. I just had this call with Dave Wisher, worrying about what other people think when you post up, how it looks, how it sounds. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. When you start at the beginning, you don't have any followers. Nobody's going to see it anyway. <laughs> and so it's good to suck in private so that when yeah. people actually start following you, they're like, oh, this guy's actually pretty good. It's yeah, because I sucked yeah. until I got better. So, yeah. but yeah, man, I think that like, that just opened my eyes too with the branding, which is like it, it all comes down to the same thing. Is you got to put in the work consistently, you got to have a clear vision, and you just got to quit. You just can't quit um, and keep working on it until something starts to work. Well, John, man, it's definitely great to have you um, on the podcast. The, 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 this segment is the brand blueprint. Really been focusing on that um, for what people that have done things at a high level, and you have probably done it at the highest of levels. Uh, with all the accolades that you have. But one of the things I do love is that, like, you're a man of the people. You're never too humble. I text you, like, hey, man, you open to doing something? you got so many other things to do. You're like, yeah, sure, I'll pop on and spend 30, 45 minutes um, uh, with us. And so, again, I appreciate that, brother. Thanks so much for being on the Rainmaker Podcast. Always, my dude. Appreciate you. Thanks for everything Thank you do.